Oh, well howdy, I'm glad you're here. I was just about to show off my uh, brand new uh, fan Pokemon to absolutely no one. So, uh, uh, it's kind of good you showed up to be honest. Last time I showed off a bunch of my fake Pokemon for a fan region which doesn't exist and uh, the response was quite frankly incredible. Uh, even though the video itself bombed harder than you know, a bomb. The absolutely sheer amount of enthusiastic commenters sharing ideas and names for Pokemon that didn't have them yet, and the talented artists showing their takes on many of the different designs, mainly the Love and Chop line. Who would I be if I didn't show off the rest of my fake region? Some sort of blue baller, and you know me, I'm I am no I'm not blowing any balls. But before we get into the new Pokemon, if you were here last time, you'll remember I said I wanted to redesign a couple of the ones I showed off, so why don't we start with those? Pukeko was the fire starter, and I said I wasn't 100% happy with it, as well as its evolution. So let's check out the changes I made. I thought the little flame on Pukeko's head was a little too on the nose to show it was a fire type instead. Now it's covered in coal dust, which in case you didn't know is quite flammable. I also think the proportions are just a little bit cuter. The evolution received a redesign too. I thought it looked a little uh, dead-eyed. I think the redesign, while not changing all that much, gives it uh, you know, a much needed bit of uh, personality. If you're here for the last video, you'll also remember Elation, who I wanted to redesign, uh, but I couldn't bring myself to change anything about this happy little bastard. However, I took a crack at it, and now I think I'm much happier with this design. Hey, he's still happy, just now looks a little better, at least I think so. Another two designs I wasn't really happy with was the stoat line. I thought they were a little too simple, but apparently a, a ton of people liked them. So due to my own hesitance to change the designs all that much, I ended up kind of just redrawing them in different poses. I'll probably take another crack at them some other time. I don't even like the one, the pose I did for the long one. I was thinking, oh, I'll make him flat. Like he can go flatness and, and, and slide into here. You know how like the, the trap flattens the, the stoat. Uh, and so I was gonna make a flat. It, it doesn't matter, maybe I'll like, at a flat ability or something. There was also Boohoo, who I realized should have a peanut butter theme midway through filming the first video. And here's what that looks like. Uh, he's got a succulent midsection and excretes a delicious smelling thick liquid from its rear end to distract predators after it. Uh, unfortunately, all this actually does is leave a trail leading directly back to Boohoo. Oh, he's just a poor little guy. Maybe there's even like a, a bread spread made out of this Pokemon's excrement, you know? <laughs> Hey, what's that? It's, oh, that's, that's my, my maggot shit sandwich. Its evolution also got a little update, and it now looks a bit more interesting. It still has the delicious globs of peanut butter-like liquid on it, but uh, I'd imagine it's using it to, like, speed up its own growth so it can evolve quickly. Speaking of evolving, the final stage also needed a little update, I thought, so I more so redrew this one with a few changes to proportions and details. I think it looks a little bit better than before. Love Disc's evolution also needed an update, mainly because it looked... You know, this updated big lipped broken heart I think works a little bit better than the original. It doesn't have the teeth, sure, but I honestly don't think they were all that needed in the first place. I also added a few extra details like the heart shape near its mouth. Uh, I thought this love disc evolution could use its rear end to like mimic a much bigger fish and scare away any predators. If you were here last time, you'll remember a set of coconut Pokemon that I showed off for like three seconds and then promptly threw in the trash because at least in my opinion, they weren't good enough to even warrant being in the region. I'll go and get them! I am pogging! Say hello to Nut Root! Based on coconuts and condensed plant roots, that's the black stuff taking refuge there, this little guy wanders around looking for nutrient-rich soil to eat, hence the ability Earth Eater, which means ground-type moves are absorbed by Nut Root, killing it in the process. Battle Armor's there because of the coconut helmet, obviously. Everybody knows coconuts can't get crit. Nut Root then evolves into Huskonk. It's an odd name choice, I know, but strangely enough, I find it much harder to come up with the names rather than the designs. The first part, Husk, uh, comes from the outer shell of the coconut, you know, the husk, and the second part is from the sound the coconut makes when it hits someone. Husk Conk uses its rock hard vines to drag itself around just a little bit faster than Nut Root, alongside whapping and entangling foes with them. Uh, you can also see he's growing a little something out of his coconut shell. Whatever could that be? Go, Coco! 
It was the best I could do, I swear. Go Coco is named as such thanks to its great new legs that it uses to amble around. And what's this? Little nut roots growing on its head? These little fellas will drop off when they're ready and find a coconut of their very own to make their home. And with that, we're done with all the redesigns of the previous video's Pokemon. Please let me know what you think. I know there's going to be a few people out there and say, I prefer the previous design, Radical Zona, but screw you. You need to learn when to shut up. So let's move on to the new Pokemon, shall we? Please let me know what you think of these ones, and I hope you enjoy. Let's start off with a cute one, shall we? Cranda rolls in! Cranda is a combination of panda, well, red panda, and cranberry. And, and that's what he's rolling around on, a very large, juicy cranberry. You can see I had to change a heart uh, with the harvest ability. I figured ripen would be a better fit, which increases the effects of any berries Cranda uses. A uh, grassy surge is also there, which creates a grassy terrain on the battlefield when Cranda enters it. I figured the juicy cranberry liquid squelching everywhere would help the grass grow. Cranda also has the brand new signature move, Berry Gush, a grass type move which sprays the opponent all over with sticky sweet cranberry juices. Now cranberry juice is pretty good for you, so this move functions in two ways. If your opponent isn't inflicted with a status condition, think poison or burn, it'll do a fair amount of damage, but if the opponent does happen to have one, not only will it do damage, but also cure them of the affliction. Now, why on earth would you want to cure the enemy Pokemon of its status? Because it's the right thing to do, you whore. Well, the opposing Pokemon feels so bad that you helped it out, it loses its will to fight, lowering both of its attacking stats sharply. Isn't that just great? Cranda, of course, has an evolution, otherwise in the big leagues it'd just get stepped on. <laughs> Cranda evolves into, Dear Lord, please help me find a name for this guy, I just can't do it. He gets larger, but the cranberry doesn't, allowing him to squish the berry harder and shoot more juice out. And that's kinda it. Next Pokemon's up, hey, do you guys like Ralts? What the fuck? Yeah, I'm honestly surprised Game Freak hasn't done a Ralts regional line in the official games yet. Then again, I'm surprised uh, about a lot of things that Game Freak doesn't do nowadays. And I know you're probably thinking that I've gone and made God of War a delicious forbidden treat, but no! Actually, I've gone the complete opposite direction, so unless you're into that, you know. I've decided to make this line based on cursed spirits that are out for revenge, aka Lechridge. Ralts here hasn't changed all that much other than the ghost typing and slightly different head shape, and the more drastic changes occur once it evolves into Curlia which, as you can see, is going through a it's-not-a-phase phase. A phase. Uh, little bit of lore for this line, uh, like how the original Curly is affected by its trainer's positive emotions, growing <coughs> beautiful as a result. Hey, their words, not mine. This version of Curlia feeds on negative emotions instead, and instead of growing beautiful, just grows stronger. Once Curly has absorbed enough negative emotions, it evolves into violence. <laughs> I figured the whole guarding shtick wouldn't really work with this version of God of War, so... That's the best I could do. <laughs> I think you can already imagine the sorts of, uh, I'm gonna call it mischief of violence gets into. Uh, ripping the dark red blade from its head, spewing all sorts of horrible psychic energy from the wound and stabbing its opponent soon after. Even thought of a signature move, uh, here called <laughs> Break Neck, which acts pretty much exactly like Fissure or Sheer Cold, you know, small chance to hit, but if it does, 100% chance to, uh, knock out the enemy Pokemon. I definitely feel like I could do this whole Ghost God of War idea a little more justice, so I'll add this to this episode's list of redesign for next episode Pokemon. Nothing too drastic, just maybe a few more details here and there. Moving on to the next Pokemon, a couple of people in the comments of the last video were surprised that I hadn't made a Kiwi Pokemon. After all, it is uh, the New Zealand native bird, you know, the one everybody knows. There it is! But stay tucked away deep into the forest, you may instead catch a glimpse of... Pee-wee. Herman, I just realized this is Pee-wee Herman. <laughs> no, that's not good! He masturbates in the corners of the bushes, waiting for someone to pass by. <laughs> One of the craziest things about kiwis is their eggs. Uh, they evolved from a much bigger bird, again, no natural predators, so, you know, what's the need for size, right? But despite their body shrinking down five times over, their eggs were having none of that shit, and so... I'm pretty sure the idea of pushing something so large out of your body would make even the strongest person squirm in their seat, but hey, I can relate! <laughs> Pee Wee does evolve into a lovely little guy called Kiwi. <laughs> yeah, the name's a little similar to the first, what with Pee Wee meaning small and Wee meaning small. But I'd like to think of it like as a homage, homage? To the earlier names of Pokemon like Seal, where it was literally just Seal spelt slightly differently. The keen eyed of you might just notice a distinct pattern on the side of Kiwi. Yep, I've combined the kiwi and kiwi fruit into a single Pokemon. I've often heard folk from other countries, mainly America, refer to the kiwi fruit as just kiwi, and that's the stupidest shit I've ever heard. This is a kiwi, 
and this is the kiwi fruit. You don't cut a kiwi in half and eat the insides. I don't call gooseberries goose. Geese? Kiwi doesn't evolve, and you might notice that its stats are kind of trash, but that's where the ability comes in. Total zeal, cause zealand. <laughs> It activates when Kiwi is fighting a foe with a higher base stat total than itself, immediately gaining a plus one boost to every stat to level the playing field. The shiny for this Pokemon would be for sure a golden Kiwi fruit, just changing the green to a gold. And while writing this script, I realized I haven't actually been doing the shinies, which could have been a fun thing to add. I tell you what, when I eventually do a final video with all the Pokemon together, I'll add in a little shiny segment too. And if you're watching this with the big compilation, then you've noticed it from the start. There it is. Wow. But it's not there for anyone watching the original video, so screw you, I guess. I had a previous design for Kiwi and Peewee, actually, but I wasn't really happy with them. I'm sure, much like the last video, I'll get a few comments saying they prefer the original designs, but in this case, you'd be wrong. Okay, let it go. Up next is another regional form, this time for Smoochum. FBI, open up! Snatching away its ice typing, Smoochum now becomes a pure psychic type. Never really got the ice typing anyway. It, and now it's not only based on a baby, but also Japanese idols. Happy Nyan Days, anyone? <laughs> I know what you're thinking. Radical Soda, what kind of freaky ass stuff are you into? But this Pokemon isn't for me. Oh no! I mean, what else is my good friend and idol enthusiast Neil gonna use when he enters this Pokemon region, huh? Hey, hey, don't look at that. Smooch him then evolves, not into Jinx, good lord, keep that thing away from me, but into Yanks. Again, better name anyone? Let me know. I realized halfway through creating my decks, hey, wait a minute! I haven't catered to the furries. Mm-mm, lasagna. In each generation, there's always a Pokemon that certain uh, people are very enthusiastic about. Brakeson, Lucario, Cinderace for some reason. And in my region, it's Nyanks. A little on the nose, I get it, it has boobs, but so does Jinx, and so what are you gonna do? Nyanks has the signature move Performance, which is a terrible name I know. This move is a for fun move, like Metronome, that can only really be used in the main story playthrough. Although now that I think about it, this move could also probably be used in competitive, because people really like have very distinct sets for their Pokemon. This move changes based on the opposing Pokemon's nature, so sorry Pokemon legends, you'll have to take your no nature, no held item, no ability bullshit elsewhere. For example, if the opposing Pokemon's nature is bashful, they're overcome with shyness from the performance and take a hard hit to their defensive stats. They've got a jolly nature, the opposing Pokemon really enjoys the performance, and Nyanks gets a boost to its own stats. Serious nature? They absolutely hate the performance, and they take damage in the process from mental anguish. Calm nature? They just sit there, watching, dead-eyed. Nyanks faints. On to the next Pokemon now, this one being a completely new one, Scrolch. Scrolch is a little cockroach wrapped up in a scroll. And here you were thinking my designs couldn't get any worse. A while back I designed a bunch of Fakemon on a stream. I have no idea if that VOD's been archived, I'll try to find it. But there's a few Pokemon from that stream I liked enough to, you know, the point where they'll be making an appearance here. One of which is not Scrolch, but Scrolch's evolution, Necroach. The idea for this Pokemon is an owner of a demonic spellbook saw a cockroach scuttling along the pages and slammed the book shut on it, unknowingly imbuing it with a horrible power. Uh, a Necroach isn't very hardy, but boy can it hit hard! A hit hard with Hell Spell, that is! A new signature move that functions similarly to Magnitude, except it's a dark type move with random added effects. Maybe it'll lower the opponent's stats, maybe it'll paralyze him, maybe it'll just do some damage, who knows. Originally Necroach was a bug ghost type, but, you know, I think dark type works better anyway in this case, you know, what with in Japan, it's the evil type and all. Here comes another regional form, this time I'm going to be using the opportunity to quote unquote fix an official Pokemon, that being Mawile. If you're deep into Pokemon history and lore, you might know that Mawile was probably changed from a dark type to a steel type late in the development of Ruby and Sapphire, due to there already being plenty of dark type Pokemon and just not enough steel ones. I mean, who cares about losing stab on all the biting moves and, you know, not having any steel moves, right? In the New Zealandonian region, Mawile's creeped its way back into the dark type and well, not much else. It looks slightly different, and I'd imagine even though it's more, it's smaller, it can stretch it out and shoot it at foes to latch on and swing them around. But you'd be an idiot to think I'm done there! Mawile's jaw expands and stretches, transforming and twisting until it's bigger than Mawile itself! Even though the, the, the regular Pokemon it's bigger than itself, but... 
Either way, Jawile, name under development, rides this ferocious beast into battle, all while sitting pretty on top. Obviously, as you can see, I didn't just want to make Mega Mawile 2.0, and for the most part, I think I succeeded. But while I like this design, it definitely could be better. I'll add it to the redesign list. In fact, I've already got a uh, pretty uh, funny idea for it, so I'll show it off in the next video. You know what needs to be a Pokemon? It was here the whole time! This idea came to me one day, basically I was trying to come up with another steel type and thought, hey, what if a hermit crab used a garbage can as a shell? Wouldn't that be funny? <laughs> this is Scud Crab. It's like mud crab, but with, you know, this Pokemon hides inside a garbage can waiting for someone to come by and insert delicious, delicious trash. I'd imagine the New Zealandonian residents have tried using these Pokemon as public trash cans, but with the way they scuttle around, it'd be hard to keep them off the roads leading to traffic jams and stuff. Scud Crab has a cool new ability called Dump In, which activates when an opposing... No, you don't take a shit in the Pokemon. I just realized how that sounds. When this happens, no matter what it is, a berry, a focus sash, a hyper potion, yes, you can finally take advantage of gym leaders heal spamming their Pokemon, its long tongue lashes out and grabs a hold of whatever garbage is left over, gobbling it down and restoring its HP by a decent amount. This also activates with items like leftovers, essentially stealing the item after the first use and removing it from the battle. But what's cool about Scud Crab is that it actually has another form, which I'd imagine you could activate in the party menu or something. In this new tipped over form, it's easier for Scud Crab to launch its garbage filled stomach contents at its foes, thus basically swapping its defenses with its offense. It also swaps its dump in ability with dump out, which activates when Scud Crab uses its held item instead of the opposing Pokemon. It launches the leftovers at its foe, dealing damage in the process. Maybe like a quarter of their HP? Half? I don't know, I'm not, I'm not a balance expert. If you'll remember from the last video, I made 10 new evolutions, one for each typing that hadn't been used yet. And in that video, I went through three of them then, so why why don't we go through another three of them now? It, it's hard to like be serious with this. I'm, I'm just looking back at myself with whiskers and a fucking button nose. Let's start with Collion, the normal type evolution. Having a farm dog to herd your animals is a common thing here in New Zealand, and the most recognizable farm dog is, of course, the Border Collie. Growing up, I also really loved to read a comic strip called Foot Rot Flats by Murray Ball, which was all about the adventures of Wolf Foot Rot and his dog, Dog. This comic strip was a big part of why I grew up drawing alongside other comics like Garfield. And don't let that push you away from Fudrot Flats. It's great, I swear. And I think having a dog like Evolution is a nice little tribute. I thought Intimidate would work well as an ability. A sheep dog, of course, needs to be able to move sheep and intimidation is a big factor there. If the sheep aren't scared, they aren't gonna move. I'd also imagine these are the Pokemon farmers used to herd and protect their flock of the Lumchops line, with Collion sometimes having trouble moving Ram Bar, just like the dog sometimes had trouble moving a stroppy Ram in the comic strip. Next up is the Steel type evolution, Whirlion. Great, what a great name. That's such a good name. This evolution is based on a gyro and thus learns a lot of spinning moves. So imagine it like twisting up its ears and then letting them go and starting the momentum, you know? Its tail is supposed to look like a spinning toys cord, you know, like the ones you yank to get them started, but I think it looks a little too much like Woody's pull cord. <laughs> I'll probably redesign this one just a little, make it look a little more Beyblade-ish, maybe? Let it rip it on. Next up is the rock type evolution, and before I show you it, I want you to all think of one thing and one thing only. Pearl necklace. Pearl necklace. Pearl necklace. Pearl necklace. Pearl necklace. Pearl necklace. Don't you dare. I absolutely did not want to create a rugged rock looking type evolution like everyone else, so I racked my brain to think hard of something new. Gems were the first thing to enter my mind, but I went a little bit further after coming up with a few designs that I wasn't really happy with. I don't think I even saved them. And ended up eventually with pearls. And honestly, this is one of my favorites. I love the colors, I love the design, and it's not anal beads, for God's sake, shut up. In every new generation, Game Freak tends to add a couple of new fossil Pokemon, uh, apart from Gens 2, 7, and 9. Scarlet Violet really letting down the whole fossil thing. You'd think that, they'd, you know, what with all the Paradox Pokemon that have something to do with fossils, but no, I don't. <laughs> I know they like time traveling movies, and then you, maybe you could have a fossil Pokemon of an actual ancestor of a Pokemon. I'm just saying, like, I could come up with something interesting for it. Usually I find these fossil Pokemon really interesting, and uh, when I get one, usually in a Pokemon game, then I'll immediately add it to my team. My favorite, of course, being Archon. I love that little guy. So I, obviously, you can see where this is going, you know, I'm gonna add fossil Pokemon to my own region, and for New Zealand, at least, there are two 
really quite perfect, and I really mean perfect, candidates for this. So as I said before, a lot of the Kiwis population was picked off by the native Māori tribes, mainly for their feathers, for, I, I think, like, ceremonial cloaks and, well, and their meat, I suppose. But there was another bird in New Zealand hunted so much, I think, by both the Māori and Pākehā alike, Pākehā meaning the white New Zealander in Māori, and that is the moa. Moa? Moa. Or moa? I, I don't know, I'm just gonna say it a way and you're gonna accept it, okay? Future ad here, I realized when I was editing this I never actually finished that sentence. It went extinct. It was hunted so much that it went extinct. Thank you. There were a few species of moa, some of which were gigantic, reaching up to two meters tall at their back. Funnily enough, uh, moa were generally vegetarians, uh, mainly eating berries, leaves, shrubs, that sort of thing. I don't think New Zealand actually had grass at this point. Uh, the whole island was basically just two big forests. Anyway, the moa is the perfect candidate for a fossil Pokemon, and thus, here's its first stage, Monyur. It's a moa chick that looks like doo-doo. The idea to make the Pokemon look like it's Evolution's turds to camouflage makes more sense once I talk about the other fossil Pokemon, but let's not get ahead of ourselves and move on to Monyur's evolution first. Camor! See what I did there? This Pokemon's almost as large as the Moa itself and can easily camouflage to look like a regular bush just by tucking its neck into its leaf-like looking feathers. I know it looks like a grass type, but that's kind of the point. It's just camouflage. But why does it need to camouflage, you might ask? Well, because the Moa actually had a predator. Yeah, I'm kind of glad that one's extinct. <laughs> <laughs> the Haas Seagull was a gigantic well, eagle, which I'm sure struck terror in the hearts of any more that happened to come across its path, but maybe not so much when it was still in check. Introducing Harpy, a combination of Harst and, well, Harpy, you know. Because they're extinct, I wanted to incorporate the ghost typing in some way. Uh, the reason why the Moa Pokemon doesn't have it is because some people, uh, uh, silly people, but <laughs> people, uh, still believe they might still exist, kind of like a New Zealand Bugfoot. Bugfoot? What the fuck is a bookfoot? <laughs> It'd be pretty hard to miss a giant flying eagle though, so while the moa has its own legend, I don't think the Haast Eagle is uh, having any, uh, uh, Haast Eagle enthusiast. The Haast Eagle still lives. People hanging around. I don't- I- am I even saying sentences at this point? It's not the strongest Pokemon out there, uh, but I gave it Arena Trap as an ability, so that balances out things a bit, I think. Not much to say about Harpy, uh, so let's move on to its edgy evolution, which I don't have a name for. I tried, I died, what are you gonna do? Either way, this evolution is also extremely large, and that's kind of that. I mean, and not as many interesting facts about this one because the Haast Seagull is just kind of a big eagle, but I think this fossil duo is pretty cool. Uh, the evolutions, I feel, might need some small changes, but the overall concepts, at least, I feel are good enough. And speaking of good enough, here's a Pokemon that isn't. Phoebacarp is what happens when scientists crossbreed Magikarp and Phoebus. Why would they do this? Well, to create a combination of Gyarados and Melodic, of course, all the power and none of that angsty rage. Why am I speaking like this? Unfortunately, nature doesn't really give a shit about what you want, and instead of getting a mellow Gyarados, instead, scientists created an extremely aggressive melodic called... Gyarotic. That doesn't sound great, I admit, but Melodos doesn't really either. This Pokemon is extremely strong, like legendary tier, but the trade-off would be that Phoebacarp would be incredibly hard to evolve, and you couldn't just catch a Gyarotic in the wild, as it would just swat away any Pokeballs you try to throw. With the exception, of course, being probably the Master Ball. Or maybe it'd have like a teeny tiny catch rate, I'm talking like it's got 1 HP and it's sleeping and you throw a Timer Ball 50 turns in and you've still only got like a 2% chance to catch it. I'm thinking to evolve Phoebacarp, maybe you'd have to battle foes of a similar level and win in order to get it like a secret stat counter up like let's say you have to fight pokemon that are at least five levels below you saying that made it sound like you have to fight pokemon lower five levels below and above you uh to, to add like a plus one to the counter and once that's finally filled it'll evolve meaning you can't just have it at the back of your party like a magic carp and rely on the busted exp share to get your gyarados if you think of a different like idea to evolve it let me know it has to be hard but not like impossible but i i think that would be uh something would work like that maybe something else i don't know let me know what you think and that's all I have time for today, literally, because I had to re-record this whole video. That's great, that's always fun. Let me know if you have any favorites or any ideas, naming ideas, anything at all, please. Put it down in the comments, I love going through them and I try to get through as many as I can, especially in those first couple of days when the video goes live. And if you've made any fan art of the Pokemon that I show off in these videos, please do send it to me. I really love looking at that stuff. Uh, if you're on Twitter or X, that's probably the best place to uh, show that to me. I'm Real Radical Soda on there. 
uh, links in description there. Or if you're in the Discord, uh, feel free to slap it in the uh, Radical Soda fan art section. I check that every now and again if there's a if there's a little little symbol next to it saying there's there's new things to look at. I have been debating with myself whether or not to add a link to it, uh, the Discord that is in this video itself but seeing as this is right at the end and i'll put it in the pinned comment uh down below where not really many people are going to see it uh because i just don't want a big rush of people like i did with the finding nemo video check down there if you want to join it uh and if it's not there then i opted to leave it out so sorry <laughs> i'd also like to thank all my patreons for uh supporting me youtube keeps age restricting my videos for showing too much censored butt cheek i guess so uh Thank you, you're, you're keeping me fed and watered, so that's that's very nice of you. And if you're interested, I mean, I usually I usually don't uh, shout out my Patreon, but you get the uh, the thumbnail arts, um, the full versions of those. They're usually just half bodies, but you get those, and you get early viewings of videos before they come out. So uh, for certain tiers, it's just to help me out, really. If you've if you've got the spare money, you know, you might as well spend it and get almost nothing in return, you know. Anyway, thanks for coming along. Uh, I plan on doing a part three of this, and I think there's enough for a part four as well. I'm not sure. We'll have to see. So, thanks very much. I'll catch you later. Use code radical. <laughs> I've got to use code radical in Gamer Subs. That's. <laughs> God damn. See this? You can get this. For the 10% off, code radical. Also, I just want to say that I made Nyx for myself. I didn't actually make it for Neil, I made that shit for me. <laughs>